Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to the Bulletproof Your Lower Back Workshop. Hello, 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 hello. Thank you for being here. I'm Dr. Tabor Smith. And as everybody is coming in, I just want to welcome you and also share a little bit about how to use the software if you've never been on one of our webinars before. Laureen has, Larry has, you guys have been here. Thank you. That's exactly what I was going to ask. If you would say hello and if you would maybe let me know where you're listening from. Laureen is from Vancouver, British Columbia, where the sun has decided to finally come out. I'm so glad because we need that sunshine, right, Laureen? We need that sunshine. Awesome. Larry, just saw you guys today. So glad. Thank you for being here. So glad you're here. Wallace, what's up, my man? How you doing, Wally? Hope you're doing great. All right. There is a chat below the video, so hopefully you can see uh, that there is a place where you could post, say hello, love to know where you're listening in from for tonight's workshop. And I am not going to keep you guys long tonight. I'm going to jump right into the content. So if everybody can say hello and let me know that you can hear me all right. Patricia, hello from Houston. Nancy, how's it going? Thanks for being on tonight. You make you guys make my day whenever you are on here live with me. It, it makes me super happy. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well... Let me share my slides and let me just dive into the content, bulletproof your lower back. Now, let me just say this first before we get going. This is one of my favorite, most favorite workshops that I do and we'll only do this once a year. But if there's anybody qualified to teach a workshop titled bulletproof your lower back, it would be me because I was not only there, it's the reason why I'm a chiropractor, it's what I do every day. I see patients all the time, hundreds if not thousands of patients over the last 16 years um, with a lot of them, this very issue. Cindy, what's up? Of course, Cindy's on the line too. I actually thought that, Larry, whenever you posted, that went through my head, is this actually Larry or is this Cindy typing in? and uh, saying hi. So <laughs> hello, Cindy. Thank you for being here. I know Larry's only here because you're here because you you influenced him and made him be here, right? <laughs> Just kidding. Barry, hey, what's up? Thank you for being here. Arlene, of course. Hello. Thank you so much for being on. Ruth is here. Hello, Ruth. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you all for being here. Super awesome. Yes. Yeah, so as I was saying, we're going to be talking about bulletproofing your low back. If you have experienced these types of symptoms or what we call body signals, right? This is our body signals workshop. Arlene from Cincinnati, welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here. If you've experienced low back pain, tight muscles, lost range of motion, stiffness, leg pain, swelling, burning, numbness, and really this list could go on and on and on, you're in the right place because I'm going to show you how to get to the root cause of these body signals. So I've been a chiropractor for 16 years now. It will be 16 years in August. And my I practice with my wife, Dr. Gina, for those of you who don't know. Pam, thank you for being here. I see your, I see your comment there. Thank you all, all for commenting and, and uh, saying hi. I really appreciate that. Been a chiropractor for 16 years. Been practicing with my wife here in Northwest Houston, Texas. Um, I'm the executive producer of what I can say is now an award-winning documentary titled A Better Way. If you haven't seen that movie, if you haven't seen the documentary A Better Way, you should go watch it. The, the website is abetterwaymovie.com, abetterwaymovie.com. You can watch it for free there. But we can now say it's an award-winning documentary. We've actually won awards at, at uh, uh, what do they call them, uh, film festivals for this documentary. It's a documentary about our healthcare system and about chiropractic. Victoria from Houston, thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. Oh, your first webinar. Thanks for being thanks for joining us for your first of many webinars that we'll be having. We'll do these every month. 
I, um, I teach this topic. Okay. I teach spinal hygiene, spinal health and hygiene all over the country. I just got back from Orlando. I'm traveling to uh, Atlanta in July, Phoenix in uh, October and also Chicago in October to speak on this very topic. I speak to chiropractors all across the country. We, we've spoke to uh, the public uh, as far as uh, businesses and groups as well. And I teach the first ever certified spinal hygienist program at Life University, Life University in Atlanta, Georgia, the largest chiropractic college in the world. I teach their certified spinal hygienist program virtually. All right. So I do live here in, in Houston, but I teach this, this program virtually. And we talk about lifetime spinal care. How, what, what does it mean to take care of the spine and the nervous system? And we're going to dive into that today. Let me share with you though. And, and look, I, I realize I could probably just send you all an email right now with like the handful of things that you should do. Like, here's the list. Just do this every day. Here you go. And it would help you. But so many of you would not see the value in it. So just give me the next 30 minutes, maybe 45 if I talk a lot. Just give me these next this next half hour to show you and prove to you that our approach, my approach, what I've been doing for the last 26 years of my life works. And it's what you should do if you want to bulletproof your spine, bulletproof your lower back. So give me the next half hour. Let me build this and show you this and prove this to you that this is the best and simplest strategy that you could use to approach maintaining a good, healthy spine. All right. So my story starts back in, uh, this would be 1996. I was 16 years old. I would, I played sports. I played every sport that I could possibly play. My dad was a high school basketball coach all summer long, all year long. That's all I did was play sports, basketball, football, baseball. And the, as we'll talk, we'll, we'll talk about what a micro trauma is here later on, but I had just constant daily micro traumas to my spine every single day, little traumas that didn't take me out that day, but they continue to add up and add up and add up. And Arlene says, this is also your first webinar. All right. Awesome. Thanks for, thank you, Arlene. Appreciate you being here. So these little traumas continued to add up and add up until I was a, getting to be a junior in high school. And I was trying out to play basketball for my dad, who was a varsity high school basketball coach. And my lower back started hurting just immensely, terribly, right? Like I couldn't function. I couldn't get through a practice. I couldn't get through, um, you know, training with my teammates and so my parents, who had never heard about chiropractic, my parents gave me uh, Tylenol, Advil, over-the-counter meds, right? That's what you do whenever you have uh, a back pain. That's what we thought. So I would take these over-the-counter meds, and they might give me a little bit of relief for, I don't know, 15 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever. And then this pain would come back. It would come raging back. It continued to get worse, continued to get worse. So my parents took me to a medical doctor who said, yeah, you have low back pain. Like, oh yeah, I knew that, but okay. And see, so he says, here, take this prescription. It was prescription pain pill. So I started taking the prescription strength pain pills. And guess what? Maybe helped a little bit, but man, it was miserable. I was in pain all the time. And, and I take a prescription pain medication. It might help for 30 minutes or an hour, but then I was just right back raging pain in my lower back again. In fact, it was getting worse. I started, when I would move in certain positions or I try to move real quick to catch a, a, a basketball or a baseball, I would have these shooting pains that started going down my legs, like electrical shooting pains. It was miserable. So I remember uh, going back to the medical doctor saying, this is not helping. My pain's getting worse. It's shooting down my legs now. And he's like, oh yeah, you have low back pain and sciatica. I'm like, oh really? Okay. And he goes, here, take this and this and this. Stronger pain pills, anti-inflammatories, and muscle relaxers, okay? So now I'm on all of this stuff, trying to play sports, trying to move, trying to function, and my pain kept getting worse. I remember one night, in the middle of the night, it's like 2 a.m., I wake up in my bed, locked down, I mean spasming my entire body, and I'm screaming, help, because I don't know what to do, and I don't know what's going on. My parents come in. And they said, we got to go. We're going to the emergency room. And my parents took me to the emergency room. I remember that night staying there at the hospital, going through test after test, getting, you know, whatever imaging they did. And we were there for hours. We finally got to go home after my, my pain had calmed down a little bit. My muscles had stopped spasming. And guess what we left the hospital with? 
stronger pain meds, stronger anti-inflammatories, stronger muscle relaxers, and a referral to a neurosurgeon. That's what I was looking at. That's what I thought the future was. And it was miserable. It was terrible. It was like I was stuck in this prison. I couldn't do what I wanted to do. I couldn't play any of the sports I loved. I couldn't play with my friends. I could barely make it to school in the morning. I was having so much pain and so much problems. And I just thought it was going to be like this. Like this was the rest of my life, right? My family member, I had a family member who had went through some very similar type symptoms and, and pain issues and problems. And it was an uncle of mine. He called my parents and he said, I heard Tabor's having really bad low back pain. I had similar type of pain. My chiropractor really helped me. You should take Tabor to see my chiropractor. Now, we had never been to a chiropractor before, but at this point, I thought anything sounded better than a neurosurgeon, and I knew that the meds weren't helping. So we went to the chiropractor. He took his own x-rays. He did his own exam. He sat down with me, and he showed me, which I'll show you my x-rays here in just a little bit. Um, he showed me an area in my spine that had shifted so far forward, so far out of alignment that it had put pressure and irritation on the nerves in my lower back and was shooting pain down my leg. Now, I'll, and when I show you my x-rays, I'll show you what it's called. Now I know it's a spondylitic spondylolisthesis at L5. That's what I had. That's what I still have. Um, I, he didn't use those words. If he did, I wouldn't even have known what that meant. Um, but basically he said, look, this is a, a serious problem. We've seen it before, but we can help you through gentle chiropractic adjustments, through specific rehab exercises. We've helped people get over this, reduce your pain, improve the health of your back and get you back out there and get you playing sports again. So that sounded amazing to me. I was, I said, sign me up, please, please let me do this. Right. And that began my journey to discover not only how do I correct my spine, specifically even my lower back. So this is specific for this workshop. Not only how do I correct my issues, but how do I make sure that that never happens again? So I went to the chiropractor every other morning before school. This was about a three month program. Every other morning I would wake up at the crack of dawn. I would get there before the um, anybody else and I would be the first patient. And then I would be able to, my, my parents would take me to school, but, and I would get there before our first class started. I did this every other day. My pain within the first three months was completely gone by my re-exam. Like I was a 100% normal functioning teenager again. And I thought, I need to become a chiropractor so that I can help people with this condition, so that I can learn more about what my condition was, and so that I can show them how to get out of this prison of pain, and, and I could make sure that myself, I, that I never went back to that prison again, all right? So that's where this workshop comes from. That's how this workshop was created. Now, before I can just tell you what you need to do about your spine, I need to be able to teach you some things so that you really understand why what I'm going to tell you to do works and why you need to do it. So this is a spine. If you look closely here, you'll see a one segment that we took that is a vertebrae, a disc, and a vertebrae. That's on the left here, right? You can see the, the vertebral body. You can see the intervertebral disc. We're going to talk a lot about discs tonight because vertebral discs are very important. But a lot of people think the disc is a shock absorber, a shock absorber. It is not. The disc is a terrible, terrible shock absorber. In fact, the more shock that disc gets, the more it gets jammed, the more it gets damaged, and the faster it degenerates and decay. In fact, what I'm going to show you, this next picture, these curves in your spine, these are the shock absorbers. So you should have natural curves in your spine. Those curves act as a spring. Uh, gravity is constantly on you. If you have these good curves in your spine from the side, good, what we call a lordosis or curvature in the neck, a kyphosis or curvature in uh, the opposite direction in the thoracic or mid back, and another lordosis in the lumbar spine. If you have these good curves in your spine, then you have a shock absorber and it absorbs the stress of gravity. I'm going to go back to this picture here. If you lose those curves in your spine, then the discs become the shock absorbers. And like I just said, discs are not good shock, shock absorbers. So what do discs do? Discs are spacers. Okay, curvatures are shock absorbers. Discs are spacers. So I want you to lean into this picture and look at that segment that I've 
that I have for you on the left side of your screen, do you see where I put two orange lines in there? Do you see that white hole between those two orange lines? That is where the nerve comes out at each level. You can look over on the right side of your screen where L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, all of those lumbar spine are there. You see the white openings, those holes, those are where the nerves come out. The disc is there to keep that space open so that the nerve can come through there. All right, that's important because when you start losing hydration of your disc, when you start losing height, disc height, that hole where the nerve comes out begins to narrow. That's bad because that puts pressure and irritation and a lot of times inflammation in that area and it affects the function of the nerve. So we wanna make sure we keep good curvatures and we're gonna talk more about this alignment in just a second and we wanna make sure that we keep those discs nice and hydrated. And I'm gonna show you how to do that here in just a second as well. A lot of you have heard of this term, disc herniations. We treat disc herniations all the time in my office. Now, I wish I could get to you way before your disc herniates because I could help you to prevent this. If I could get even to your disc when it's just bulging, I could help you correct that and we could keep it from herniating. But if you look at this image on the left side of your screen, this is what the disc looks like. That kind of grayish material in the middle, that's called the nucleus propulsus. That's a gel material. Okay, so imagine that little inner area is gel and it's surrounded by ligaments, rope-like ligaments. That's the outer, what we call the annulus fibrosis. It's called fibrosis because it's fiber, right? Annulus means circle, Fib fibrosis means fiber. So a circle of fibers that, that keeps the gel material inside of it. When it gets degenerated, when it gets damaged from an injury or small repetitive injuries, the annular fibrosis or the circular fibers around the outside get torn and they damage. And so that gel material begins to seep out through the outside layers of fiber and then it gets out of the disc. Now, you might have a disc herniation in the front. Okay, so I want you to notice that this disc herniation, you can see that purple arrow, that's in the back of the disc. The, the front is facing up, the back is facing down. This particular herniation is in the back. That happens a lot. One reason is because we bend forward so much. We bend forward all the time and it stretches those fibers and we're trying to lift objects or we're damaging those fibers on the back of the disc. That allows the gel material to seep out of those little tears. And that gel material, when it touches your nerve, it begins to hurt. It, it causes symptoms. It causes more inflammation. It causes more pain, okay? Now, if it's in a specific area, say it's touching what we call the sciatic nerve, which is one of the largest nerves in your entire body, if we have direct pressure or irritation or inflammation or herniation or even disc bulging that puts pressure directly on a sciatic nerve, that's where we get those symptoms that start to go down our legs, which is terrible. It's, it's the worst symptoms if you've ever experienced this, it's miserable, but it can shoot pain all the way down the legs. It can go to just to the knee or stay above the knee. Sometimes it could go down to your calf. Sometimes it can even go down to your toes, all the way down to your toes. That's when we know we really have a bad disc herniation. It's going all the way down to your toes. So sciatica we've treated, disc herniations we've treated, disc bulges we've treated. I can show you how to take care of these things. Everybody's a little bit different and it just depends on where your specific issue is located it is, it will depend on your specific symptoms. One of the ways we look at the spine and we determine whether it's normal or abnormal is through imaging. This, these images are pictures of your spine from the side. So imagine... You should have a good lumbar curve. Imagine you're looking at your low back through the side. If you look at the x-ray all the way to the left, that's what we would call normal because it has a good curve. You can see the dark disc spaces between each one of the vertebrae. It's nice, it's in a good alignment. The disc spaces are hydrated. That looks good. Normal is good. Normal doesn't hurt, right? <laughs> normal is healthy. And then look at abnormal. If you take, if you go over from the, all the way to the left, that image that says normal, you just go one image over in the middle, that's abnormal and that is an x-ray. 
you're looking at an x-ray, you can see the yellow dots where we circled, the spine is out of alignment. The discs are dehydrated or, or degenerated. We've lost the disc height. It, and imagine those dark holes. You can kind of see those dark holes behind the vertebrae. That's where the nerves come out. Look at the lowest low part of the back. If you have loss of disc height and you have a, a vertebrae that's shifted backwards, you're going to have pressure on those large nerves that are exiting the spine there. The MRI all the way on the right side of your screen, that, that image there, you're looking at an MRI. And you can see that this disc is what we call the lay term for it is a slipped disc or the technical term would be a disc herniation or a disc protrusion, the annular fibers that go around that disc have torn and they've let the gel material, the nucleus proposals, the gel material seep out of those fibers. And now that dark area where the red arrow is, that's a herniation. The dark area is the gel that's seeped out and the light, the real white strip that's going straight up and down, that's the spinal cord. So you've got a herniation that is directly on the nerves that are coming off the spinal cord there. That's gonna cause issues. That's gonna cause pain on that, on, on that specific person. So they're gonna experience these symptoms or what we would call body signals, right? Low back pain, muscles are gonna spasm or tighten up. We're gonna lose our range of motion. We're gonna get stiff. Leg pain could happen, shooting pain, swelling, burning, numbness, all of these types of symptoms. And then what is the main options that people reach for in today's society? What my family reached for when I first started having back pain and issues, it's allopathic options. Now, what I want you to realize as we're kind of going through here and talking about these different options is I want you to realize that how they don't get to the root cause of the problem. Now, I will say the only one on here that I do like and I don't have a problem with at all is physical therapy. OK, in fact, the only problem I have is that medical doctors don't refer to physical therapists enough. I don't believe physical therapy is great. No issue. No problem with physical therapy. If you have a physical therapist, great. Use them. Go for them. They're they're really great at what they do. But all of these other options are not addressing the root cause. Right. I mean, even if we're putting heat and we're just laying in bed, that's that's fine. But that's not going to fix the cause of your problem. Um, steroid injections, pain management. Those things aren't going to fix the problem. And when we take a drug, a lot of times we end up making that problem worse. Why? Because that pain was there for a reason, right? It was there to keep us from doing something. Now we've artificially blocked that pain. And now we're going to go do something that damages it, makes it even worse. Okay. So let me give you an example. My mother, when she was in her late 30s, she was a type 1 diabetic. She had renal failure. She was really in poor, uh, poor condition, poor health. And she started to develop neuropathy really bad in her feet. In fact, she developed neuropathy in her feet so bad that all of the nerves in her feet died, which means she had no, no sensation, no feeling in her feet. I mean none, not even pain. She did not feel pain, okay? One time she was walking, she stepped off the curb wrong, she broke her ankle, but she did not feel pain. So she walked on her ankle for half a day until she looked down, it was swollen up so big, she had to go to the emergency room. And, they, and from then on, they made her stay in a wheelchair. So pain is there for a reason. And when all we're doing is masking it, that's not always a good thing. Now, I understand sometimes we need a little bit of help and a little bit of relief and, you know. A pain medicine is just for that. It's to give you a little bit of relief. It's not to correct an issue or correct a problem. It's not to get to the root cause. In fact, eventually, if we don't stop taking that pain med, it, it causes even bigger problems. Look at our opioid issues and problems. These are approved drugs, oxycodone, morphine, fentanyl, hydrocodone, hydromorph, uh, like hydro, uh, morphone is what they call it. The, in 1993, which I started taking my pain meds around 1996, I was taking the, some of the, the uh, first opioids ever onto the market. That was back when they said they weren't dangerous, they weren't addictive, right? My, and, and my medical doctor was giving me opioids for my back pain as a 16-year-old. And look at what chiropractic, I believe, saved my life, got me off of those meds and got me out of pain. Because look at this, it's only gotten much, much worse. Now that's 2016 is the latest they have. And the prescription of these drugs just continues to go up and up and up. Here's a map that shows opioid prescriptions per 100 people. So per, for every 100 people, that many people are taking 
opioid prescriptions. And if you look at the orange and the red at the bottom, you know what that means? That means for every hundred people, there's got to be a bunch of people taking multiple opioid prescriptions to, to be able to get over a hundred for every 100 people. Does that make sense? So people are taking tons of medicines. In fact, the United States alone is taking enough prescription painkillers uh, to medicate every American adult around the clock for a month. So enough prescription painkillers were prescribed, I'm sorry, in just 2010 to medicate every American adult around the clock for a month. 40 people a day die of narcotic prescription overdose. It's just being, in fact, if you watch the movie A Better Way, you're going to see this is really the topic that we uh, we dove into is how dangerous opioids can be and why I understand taking a, a pain pill short term to give you a little bit of relief is one thing, but thinking that this is going to be a long term solution that's correcting the cause of your problem is absolutely untrue, right? And of course, it's all over the news. It's been on the front covers of, of magazines. We all know that. We all see that. We all know that a drug is not an answer, right? You wouldn't be here tonight if you thought drugs were the answer. And the next thing that I'm going to talk about, none of us want, and that's surgeries. So more and more people are having surgeries every single day. And we're seeing tons of what we call felled back syndrome. There's an actual syndrome for failed surgeries. Now the person has that had the surgery has even worse symptoms than they did before the surgery. And no wonder, look at some of these spine surgeries. It just looks scary, doesn't it? I mean, I don't mean to scare any of you, but look at the rods, the screws that they bolt into your spine. It's crazy. No wonder there's a condition called failed spine surgery where your symptoms actually get worse after your spine surgery. The one thing I can I can guarantee, I can show you, or, or something that should, should uh, give you a little bit of, of confidence in chiropractic is that there's no such thing called a failed adjustment syndrome right? Even if my adjustment didn't lower your pain, it doesn't make you considerably worse uh, or have an entire syndrome for the rest of your life after you get it. Now, I do understand that sometimes, very, very rarely, but sometimes there is no other option besides surgery. I understand. And if you are that one person, if you're that, you know, real small minority where you just don't have another option, you have to have surgery, then this is what I want you to at least talk to your medical doctor about before you have the surgery. Make sure you, you get these questions answered. Lorraine says, my dad had spinal surgery after a fall down a flight of stairs and he was in pain for the rest of his life. Yeah. Unfortunately, we see that. And, and, and so that's why I put this in here is that if you do feel like you're at the end of your road, okay, you've tried everything else and, and hold on. I mean, I'm going to show you what to do at the end of today's class and hopefully th these things will work for you. But if they don't and you're at your end of your wits end and your, your medical doctor is saying, hey, have surgery, at least ask them these questions. What are the risks of this procedure? I mean, you would think they would just tell you that. But they don't. A lot of times they don't. What are the costs of this procedure? Future costs. What are my expected outcomes of this procedure? And this is a great question, I think. May I interview 10 of your patients? Now, you can always do this in my office. In fact, just come on in our office. There's always 5, 10 patients in the office getting adjusted. Talk to them. Ask them how it's going. Ask them how their experience is in my office. I would love for you to come visit our office and ask these people how what their experience was with chiropractic in our office. Ask them, what does research say? I can show you just stacks of research. Come find me. Send me an email. I'll send you the research that shows what I'm doing works. All right. <clears throat> Ask them, what are my options? Is this my only option? Can we try something else? And the lastly, is this treating my symptoms or is this correcting the cause of my problem? And that is a big one. Because in most cases, we're just treating these symptoms. If you have low back pain and you just take a pain pill, <clears throat> you're treating a symptom. Muscle relaxers, treating a symptom. Leg pain, swelling, burning, even if you have inflammation and we're just taking an anti-inflammatory, we're treating the symptoms and not addressing the cause. We're treating these body signals, right? And they're just the tip of the iceberg. Treating that little tip of the iceberg right there and the whole rest of the iceberg is underneath the water. It's the real problem. It's the real issue. Because most of the time, you don't feel the entire problem. In fact, less than 10% of your nerves in your body sense pain. 
So usually this problem was building up and building up and building up until it affected the small 10% of the nerves that you're, that actually made you feel this. Candace said, we just did a case history about spinal surgeries last week in class to think people just think it's a quick fix. And we specifically mentioned telling our patients to ask their doctors about the risk before getting it done. Weigh the risk before jumping in. Absolutely. Thank you for adding that, Candace. All right, now we're going to wind up and I'm going to give you the slow pitch right down the lane. I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do to hit it out of the park and bulletproof your spine and your nervous system. I want you to start thinking about your nervous, your nervous system and all the nerves in your body as a breaker system for your body. When we have pressure on a nerve, when we have pain or irritation, it's the breaker switches that need to be reset. All right. Now, what causes these types of issues and problems? Stress. We, we always say thoughts, toxins, and traumas are the main cause. There are two types of traumas. Macro traumas, which is a major injury. Only 5% of the people in my office that come in my, my uh, practice actually had a macro, macro trauma that caused their problem. So exact, if you get into a massive car accident and you're coming in, with specific symptoms that were caused from that injury. That's what I mean. Only 5% of people fell off their roof, got in a car accident, slipped on the ice, whatever it was, that's a macro trauma. And yes, macro traumas can affect the health of your spine. For most people, it's these, it's micro traumas. Every day are bad habits, looking at our cell phone, looking down at our cell phone, sitting for too long, being in front of a computer screen, driving with our our head tilted to one side, laying on a couch with our looking at a TV for a long time. All of these micro traumas or repetitive stresses on our spine build up and they damage the spine. They cause decreased disc height. They cause misalignments and they cause issues to our spine. This is me. Okay. This is my specific x-ray and I want to share it with you because I want you to see this and understand where my problem was, where the subluxation was. And then you'll understand the protocols that I go through that I do every single day to maintain the health and bulletproof my spine. For the last 26 years, I've done these, these protocols and they've bulletproofed my spine and I don't have flare-ups very, very rarely. I haven't had a flare-up in years. And I know a lot of you on this call or on this webinar would love to not have flare-ups for years at a time, right? Now, I'm not saying everything's perfect. This is not magic. Nothing is magic but this works because we're improving the health of our spine. This is my lower back looking at it from the side. Again, this is the curve that should be in your lumbar spine. If you look closely, starting at the dark areas between my vertebrae, you can see at L1, that's up at the top, L2, L3, L4, you just keep going down. Those discs all look pretty good. But if we zoom in on the lower discs, and, you, and I actually marked these in red dots here, you see that the very top of this picture, you can see the two red dots, they're close together, they're lined up. One vertebrae, where one vertebrae stops, right below that is the corner of the other one. That's the way it should be. Go down another segment. Now you can see those two red dots line up pretty well, right? You can see the back bottom corner of that vertebrae has a red dot on it. The top back corner of the vertebrae below it has red dot, dot on it. Where one vertebrae stops, the other one starts. Perfect, that's great. Now zoom down, go down to the lowest disc space. Number one, you see how that disc space is na more narrow? You see how it's lost height, it's lost disc height? Number two, those red dots do not line up. So my spine shifted so far, it caused a stress fracture. This is why we call it a, a spondylitic spondylolisthesis. There was a stress fracture in the pars of my vertebrae. This is a part of the bone in the back of the vertebrae. That stress fracture allowed this vertebrae to shift forward. And that red dot at the, you were looking at the bottom of my spine, the red dot on top should be right on top of the red dot below it, but it is not, it is shifted forward. That much misalignment, that much shift caused enough inflammation to give me hell. Forgive my language, but I was in hell when I was 16 years old because of that alignment, because of that shift, and because of that loss of disc height that I allowed to happen from micro trauma, repetitive stresses on my disc. So the chiropractor began to adjust me. He would adjust my tailbone right there, push that vertebrae forward. He would give me exercises to do to rehydrate 
my disc. He would strengthen the muscles around this lower area to rehab this area as good as possible. It will never be perfect again because it has shifted that far out of alignment and caused a stress fracture. I'm, my lower spine will never be perfect again, but I could get it as good as it will possibly be. And then what I do every day maintains it and maintains all the improvement that I've gotten. So what I had in that lower part of my spine was what we call a subluxation, joint misalignment, soft tissue damage, inflammation, nerve irritation, causing muscle spasms, causing pain, uh, causing um, joint fixation, tightness and fixation in, in that lower spine. Now I could have uh, continued to medicate these things for the rest of my life, but it would have never gotten to the root cause of my problem or improved the health of my spine enough to allow it to heal as much as possible. Now, this is important. I'm just going to throw this in here before I get to the rest. And I'll actually tie it up in a nice, pretty little bow for you at the end to show you exactly what you should be working on every single day. Okay. But how do you know if you have subluxation? Because many of you, after you saw that, you're like, well, I wonder if my spine has that. I wonder if it has these shifts. If you're in our office, we've done these things for you already. If you've never been in our office, you've never been to a chiropractor, these are some of the ways we use in our office five objective criteria to determine if you have subluxation and what sub type of subluxation you have. Number one is instrumentation, so range of motion. We may have you bend in certain directions and, and measure your movement and measure that range of motion. Uh, every time you come in to get adjusted, you'll feel me push on your back. That's motion palpation. You'll feel me take your head and tilt it to one side or the other. I'm feeling to see how are these vertebrae moving. If I'm feeling these vertebrae move in one area, but they're tight and they're stuck in the other area, that's subluxation. That's not moving. We'll adjust that area. Static palpation. So we're feeling things that are just sitting there. We're feeling what alignment they're in. We're feeling how they're moving. We use a posture screen, so we'll actually place data points on an image of you and measure your posture, and we use x-ray to actually see what is going on inside of the spine. So I encourage you to get your, your spine checked regularly by a chiropractor. Now for me, this is what I went through to correct my spine. And sometimes you have to go through a correction phase because there's so much damage to your spine that you have to go through a correction phase before you can move into wellness and maintenance and your daily spinal hygiene exercises that I'm about to show you. For me, my corrective phase was 36 visits. I did for three months, I went for three times a week. In our office, it depends on what severity, you're, what's going on, what level of decay or degeneration you might have in your discs. But some people would start with a 24 or 36 visit corrective care plan. This is standard across our in, uh, industry, right? This is just industry standards. Three times a week for four weeks, we would do a re-exam. We'll see how you're progressing. If you've progressed through those 12 visits, then we'll move into the next 12, two times a week for six weeks. Re-exam, see how you're progressing. If you've progressed, we'll, drop, we'll continue with two times a week for six weeks. We'll do a re-X-ray to actually see changes. Once we've gotten through a corrective phase, now we're moving into wellness. Now we're moving into maintenance. You could come in once a week, which, which would be ideal for wellness to get checked and adjusted, or, or maintenance even, or every other week. I personally don't recommend less than that. I know some chiropractors will have you come in once a month. I, do, I will say this. I think it's important to be on a rhythm. If you only go once a month, go once a month at the same exact time every month. If you go on you know, the 27th of every month, go on the 27th or around there every month. The body heals with repetition and it, and it heals when you get in a rhythm and you stay consistent with it. So if you're on a weekly adjustment, try to get there the same day every week. If you're on a three time a week, try to make sure you're doing the same three days every week. I truly believe that makes a difference. Okay. Now let's dive into what's your responsibility. So if you have subluxation, if you have misalignment, if you have damage to your spine, you could go to an expert like a chiropractor. They will analyze that damage and they will do their best to correct and help your spine correct as much as possible. But what can you do to bulletproof your spine? Well, this is where spinal hygiene comes in. And this is where we've been trailblazers. I wish we would have been taught this when we were young. When I tell people I've been practicing these exercises that I'm about to show you for 26 years, I've been doing spinal hygiene exercises for 26 years. They're amazed. They're like, wow, for 26 years, that's so long. And I'm like, well, I've been doing dental hygiene for 40 years. So it's really not that, it's really not that surprising. I've been practicing dental hygiene, brushing my teeth for 40 years. 
I've only been practicing spinal hygiene for 26. I wish I would have been practicing for all 40. OK, because we need to know this. And there's not even a definition, by the way, in any medical uh, encyclopedia or, or, or um, dictionary. <clears throat> so we actually came up with this, the certified spinal hygienist program uh, that we teach through Life University's postgraduate uh, education department, that spinal hygiene is the set of practices associated with preservation of the spine, including maintenance of the spine which involves both home spinal care and regular chiropractic checkups and adjustments. These are the three areas of spinal health. If you understand this, you will understand how to bulletproof your spine. So I'm gonna talk you through this. This is how you make your spine strong. This is how you bulletproof it. I'm going to literally describe what a healthy spine is. The further you get away from this model that I'm about to describe for you, the harder it is to have a healthy spine. So then that makes sense. The closer I can get to this model that I'm about to describe to you, the healthier my spine can get, the less it can bother me, right? The more it can heal. So the foundational premises of spinal hygiene, number one, is that your spine should be in a certain alignment. In fact, you can go all the way back to Leonardo da Vinci, one of the first people to study cadavers. He actually dissected cadavers and he drew the spine. If you literally look at Leonardo da Vinci's notes, he drew the spine straight from the front and having natural curves from the side. Fast forward a couple thousand years and you look in any anatomy book taught in any institution across the country, you look in that anatomy book, it will show the exact same drawing of the spine, straight from the front, natural curves from the side. This is the ideal alignment of the spine. Now, not everybody will be able to get their spine into that perfect alignment. Okay, sometimes there's a different conditions. There's scoliosis, there's, there's curvatures, there's, there's all kinds of different things that could be going on that would keep your spine from getting into a perfect alignment. But that doesn't mean that you can't improve your alignment. Even if you have scoliosis, you can improve the alignment of your spine and try to get it to as close to ideal as you possibly can. This is the number one first foundational concept of spinal health. You need to track and, and, and look at and do some specific exercises that are gonna help your spinal alignment. I'll show you those in just a second. Number two, the second foundational premise of spinal health is that the spine should move through a full range of motion symmetrically. So you should be able to bend in three planes of motion, forward and back, side to side and rotation forward and back side to side and rotation you should be able to bend your neck and your lower back in those three planes symmetrically i have people who come in they can bend they can almost touch their ear to their shoulder to the left but they can't even bend their neck to the right at all we need to work on that now again this is not this is not about you being perfect okay there are some people who will never be able to bend their neck or their spine into certain positions, but you can always improve that and you can always work on that. So we need to try to work on having a full range of motion because the perfect spine has a great alignment and has proper range of motion. A perfect spine doesn't hurt, okay? So we wanna to get to as close to that as we possibly can. The third foundational premise that we're gonna cover is the muscles around your spine because muscles are important as well. Muscles around your spine should be fit and strong and balanced. Now, this is where I'll give a shout out to the uh, uh, massage therapist in our office, Dave. He does a great job of helping people to get their muscles relaxed. He's actually a, a sports um, uh, massage therapist. We met at, uh, at the, the Houston Rodeo. He works on the athletes there. He's great at it. And muscles are a big part of spinal health. So the muscles around your spine should be strong. They should be fit and they should be balanced. So if you may help to maintain these three areas, alignment, motion and strength, and you do your best to get your spine to as close to ideal as possible, then your spine will have the best chance of healing as possible. The nerves that come from out of your spine will have the best chance of working properly, right? So we want to get everybody as close to this ideal alignment, motion, and strength as you possibly can. How do we do that? Number one, through chiropractic, where we, we do specific uh, techniques and adjustments and rehab uh, therapies in our office to help improve those three areas, alignment, motion, and strength. And then we give you exercises to do at home. So now I'm going to share with you something here. You should see a button that pops up. 
called the 21 day spinal hygiene challenge. If you really want to dive into these exercises, this is how you bulletproof your spine. You make sure you correct as much as possible. You make sure you're doing these exercises on a regular basis every single day if you can. Uh, and, and you get your spine as close to the proper alignment as possible, moving with range of motion as, as well as it possibly can, and strong and fit. You get those muscles around your spine as strong and fit and balanced as you possibly can. Then you're giving yourself the best chance of having less flare-ups and less pain and your nervous system the best chance to function properly. These are what we call the four core spinal hygiene exercises, and I teach them to you in the 21 day spinal hygiene challenge. So many of you have been through this before already, but if you'll get an email from me every single day, teaching you about the, the next exercise, showing you and reminding you to do these exercises. So I'll take you through them right now and just kind of real quickly show you the reasons why we recommend these exercises. But if you want to dive in, you want to see the videos, just click on that link. Um, in fact, you can see all the videos on that page. You don't even have to opt in for the 21 day spinal hygiene challenge. These four videos are on that page. Just want to let you know that. That's at spinalhygienechallenge.com. We want to do a range of motion stretch every day to maintain and improve the range of motion of your spine. Your spine should move through those three planes of motion, forward and back, side to side, and rotation. If it doesn't, then you're more prone for different types of injuries. Your alignment, you should have curves in your spine. We talked about that, the curves, the shock absorbers. That alignment, those natural curves from the side are important. That's why we lay on our spinal molding rolls every night to help mold those natural curves back in your spine so that you're absorbing shock from gravity that, you're, that is on your spine every day. Now, the two most degenerative postures in the world, and just look around you, you'll see it. Number one is head forward posture. Everybody's on their cell phones. They're in front of computers. You're probably on a cell phone or a computer right now in this workshop. We, we can't get away from it, right? And all, everything we do out in front of us all day long is starting to shift our spine forward. And we're getting these head forward postures, which causes our neck to degenerate, causes more neck problems. And then the bottom one, the very last exercise, if I really wanted to, to bulletproof my lower back, which is the topic, the name of this, this program. If I wanted to bulletproof my lower back, that is the exercise I would make sure I do not miss every single day. That is the wobble disc exercise. You will sit on it. You, you will strengthen your spine by doing what we call wobble exercises. Not only will you strengthen your spine, but you will get what we call imbibition or movement in the discs of your spine. That movement will help keep your discs hydrated. So you're pumping them. Fluid in, fluid out. That's, that brings nutrients in and helps waste material get out. That's how you keep your discs hydrated. Nutrients in, waste material out. So for all of you who think this is, you know, just too simple for you, it, it's not. Is, it, is, is a toothbrush too simple for you? Guess what? A toothbrush works. Not if you only do it once. If you only brush your teeth once in your entire life, then it, it doesn't make any difference at all. But if you brush your teeth every day over a long period of time, it makes an incredible difference. And that is the difference that these exercises make. Let me uh, uh, get to the comments here. Christina says, is a, is a chai machine a good tool to use for spine health? A, a chi machine? Chi machine. Uh, I don't know, uh, Christina. I'm not real sure what that is, to tell you the truth. Uh, Lorraine says, I'm still experimenting with towels for spinal molding. Okay, good, good. Last night, I tried a two-inch pool noodle. My back felt great this morning, but will that be too firm to use long-term? No, I don't think so. I, I recommend starting with a towel. We actually have our own foam rolls that we use um, that are 7.7 .7 millimeters in diameter to fit in through the curves of the spine, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, Lorraine is saying... Uh, talking about how sometimes those foam rolls that we recommend are a little bit too firm for people be to begin with because maybe those curves aren't where they need to be in your spine yet. So what you could do is you could take a towel, fold it in half and roll it and put one towel underneath the curve of your neck and one towel underneath your the curve of your lumbar spine. And you can start by laying on those towels. It's a little bit softer and it helps you build up the, the and, and build those good curves in your spine. And again, those curves are important, very, very important for the health of your spine. All right, good stuff. So these are the core four spinal hygiene exercises. Click the button on your screen if you want to learn more about them and join our 21 day spinal hygiene challenge. Okay. Now, one more thing, people who sit for long periods of time, which we have to do this in society more now than we've ever had to do it before, right? They say sitting is the new, 
the new smoking because it's causing so many health problems because we're not moving, our, it's degenerating our discs faster. In fact, we're starting to see this at younger and younger ages. This is degenerative disc disease. I teach courses on degenerative disc disease. The, the disc in the upper left-hand corner, that's a normal disc, fairly normal. I mean, let's say it's normal, That's a, that there's hydration in that disc. If our discs are so damaged, they're beyond phase one, they're actually into phase two. So we have arthritis and, and loss of disc height and bone spurs into that area. Sometimes in order to get as much hydration of these discs as possible, we would recommend a decompression machine, okay? Now, this is a decompression machine that we now have in our office, and we will have at, at the end of this week, we're getting in our office, because we have so many people who have this spinal degeneration now that we wanna be able to introduce this decompression. So for all of our patients, and for even people in our area who wanna to come to our office, we're, we're giving a free session of spinal decompression. I actually would like you to come to the office and try this machine out and give me your feedback on this machine. So this spinal decompression can help to stretch and open and actually has protocols that we use. So it'll put certain pounds of, of distraction on the discs and then it will relax and then it'll put distraction and then it will relax and it will help to pump that hydration and open those disc spaces. This is actually in some cases, some machines are actually FDA approved to treat disc herniations and disc degeneration with spinal de decompression. So this is an option for some people. And if you think it might be an option for you, come by the office, give us a call. Let's try it. Let's see how your body responds to it. But I would love to get your feedback on this new machine that we have in our office. All right. So if I had to put into three steps, how to bulletproof your lower back, how to really get to the core, improve the health of your spine, maintain the health of your spine and prevent it from getting worse once you do correct it. This is, these are the three steps right here. Correct your and maintain your spinal health, whether it's that's with a chiropractor, which I would recommend, right? A, a trained chiropractor to correct and, and improve that spine as much as possible and continue to try to improve it as much as possible. And then number two, do your spinal hygiene exercises to maintain what you got at that chiropractic office or physical therapist or wherever it is you go to actually correct the structure of your spine. All right. So you're correcting the structure as much as possible. You're doing your daily spinal hygiene exercises to maintain that corrected spine as, as for as long as possible. And number three, you're trying to break your bad habits that we get into every single day. And, and I know you all have bad habits because I have bad habits and everybody in the world has bad habits. We sit for too long. We drive in weird postures and, and, and positions. We're in front of the computer. We look down at our cell phone. Uh, we like the alcohol that we want to drink. We like the ice cream that we eat too much. All of these things, we don't exercise like we should. All of those bad habits add up. So, And nobody's ever going to be perfect. So we have to constantly try to break those bad habits while correcting our spine and maintaining it as much as possible every single day. We actually cause it, we call this our three-legged stool of results. When patients come into our office to tell them, if you want the absolute best results out of my office, this is what you got to do. You got to make your adjustments in rhythm. You got to break those bad habits as much as you possibly can. And you need to do your spinal hygiene exercises every day for as long as you possibly can. This is a lifetime Thing, all right. You know why this is lifetime? Because of the chaos theory. I know you've heard of the, the chaos theory, right? Or they call it the law of entropy sometimes. Everything in this world that we live in moves from order to disorder. Everything moves from order to disorder. It actually takes you putting energy into the system on a constant basis in order to move from disorder to order. That's why we have to start you out in the corrective phase of chiropractic care at three times a week because we gotta put so much energy into that. We gotta get you out of that of, of that momentum that you've gone going downhill, put the energy in to try to get it back into a, as good of order as we can. Look, here, let me give you some examples of the chaos theory. Your car breaks down by itself. You don't have to, you don't have to try to make your car break down. It, it, it just breaks down, right? It never tunes itself up. Never. It never changes its own oil. It never fixes its own transmission. Because 
you it, it's the the chaos theory the law of entropy it's always going from order to disorder never the opposite way unless you put the energy in you actually take it to a mechanic the mechanic puts the energy in and puts it back into order your house it gets messy on its own have you ever walked into your house and everything just accidentally fell into order and in beautiful cleanliness no always goes from order to disorder unless you put energy in and clean it up your body same thing your spine the same thing look we gain weight without even trying but we actually have to put energy and exercise and trying to actually lose weight mountains are crumbling volcanoes and tectonic plates when they smash together that's a ton of energy they make the mountain but without that energy mountains crumble your teeth get cavities without you having to do anything but you have to put energy in to brush them and maintain them the same exact thing goes for your spine it subluxates you get stress in your life it takes effort to maintain it and chiropractic adjustments correct those subluxations. Your daily spinal hygiene is the exercise, the energy that you're putting into the system to maintain it in a certain order. I hope that makes sense. Arlene says, glad to see the new machine. Oh, yes. Awesome. I used day, you used it daily at a residential clinic in New York and helped it helped a lot. Wonderful. Thank you, Arlene. I'm, I'm glad that you shared that. I, I look forward to seeing those good results in our office as well. All right, so let me end with this, okay? Let me take you back through, and I want to show you what it means to actually put the energy into maintaining your spine and what, what it means. I, I'm actually teaching a lecture on this at uh, Life University in July, and, and the title of, of my lecture is, is uh, what the, an adjustment, one adjustment versus uh, uh, the, okay, a chiropractic adjustment versus a chiropractic lifestyle. Sorry, I forgot the title of my own talk. A chiropractic adjustment versus a chiropractic lifestyle. One adjustment is fine. Okay, you go in, you get adjusted, you might feel better when you walk out. That's great. You you were able to, to decrease your pain without having to take a pill. I think that's a good thing. But when we make chiropractic part of our lifestyle, amazing things happen. And what that means is that you maintain your spine consistently, and you get on in a rhythm of adjustments. So chiropractic saved my life when I was a teenager. I was dedicated. I wanna learn everything I possibly can about the spine. I wanna make sure I'm implementing this to keep my spine healthy, because I know it's that important. And for the last 26 years, I've done that. I've been able to live healthy, strong. Yes, I might get a flare up or something in my lower back, like every two years, if I do something weird, I lift something wrong, right? It's, it, it's, still, it's still my weak spot. It really is. But I have to maintain it consistently. And I get adjusted every week, right? My mom wasn't as fortunate as me because she never heard about chiropractic. No one ever told her the chiropractic story. And as I told you, my mom had diabetes. She had neuropathy. She had uh, kidney disease. She passed away at the age of 47 years old, taking 21 prescription medications. I'm going to say that again. She passed away at the age of 47, taking 21 prescription medications to try to cover up those symptoms, those body signals that she had. Did she have a back pain? Did she have uh, you know, a headache? Did she have... Uh, kidney disease, neuropathy, diabetes, just taking a pill, 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 pill. And this was a sad story. This was not a success story, right? But let me share with you a success story. This is my son, Jaden. Many of you know when he was only one, he was, well, when he was born, he was born with some heart defects. And when he was one years old, he had to have open heart surgery. And I thank God for the surgeons. The, the pediatric surgeons that did surgery on my son were amazing. I thank God for their skills. There's so many great medical doctors out there. I hope you guys never think that I talk down or bad about medical doctors. I don't. I'm talking about this medical system not addressing the root cause of the problem. I'm not talking about medical doctors. So many medical doctors out there that are very smart, very brilliant. Some of them worked on my son, and I'm very thankful for them. But my son was born into the chiropractic lifestyle. Because I continued to check him and adjust him. And I went through the International Chiropractic Pediatric Association, their entire certification program, so that I could be great at adjusting 
pediatrics and adjusting my son. If you come into our office, you're going to see families. You'll see kids running around. I adjust kids all the time. I think it's the best thing, one of the best things that you can do for them. And my son got adjusted before and after the surgery and continued to get adjusted as he grew. And that is him on the left. You can see the twins. He's a twin. He's the twin. If you're looking at your screen on the left, that's Jaden. He's the one that had surgery when he was one years old. And he's thriving. He's doing amazing because he gets checked and adjusted regularly. And I think it's done so much for his recovery. It's done so much for his health. And he's he's just, he's an amazing little boy, right? So when I put all of these stories together, this is what the chiropractic story means. If you look at that top picture in the top left of your screen, that's me. That's my story. When I was 16 years old, I was headed down the road of, of taking drugs, right? Stronger pain meds, stronger anti-inflammatory, stronger muscle relaxers, just over and over and over trying to cover up that symptom with a pill and not addressing the problem until I found chiropractic. And then that turned into a success story. Look, I'm, I'm healthy. I'm strong. I'm, I have a, you know, uh, uh, a great future ahead of me. Now you take my mom's story, which was a sad, non-successful story where she never learned the chiropractic story. She never addressed the root cause of her problems. She just continued to take a pill and cover up that symptom. And then you look at my son who never had a real, never really had a choice. He was born into the chiropractic story and look at his success and he's doing amazing. So I always tell people that picture on the right of your screen with my whole family, we do what we do in my office. And I teach these workshops so that pictures like that can exist. I truly believe that. And we say in our office that we believe families who are under care in our office are healthier and safer than families who are not. And I truly, truly believe that. These are the health premises that I'll end with. I believe healthy is normal. If you're not healthy, if you're hurting, if you're sick, that's abnormal. We need to restore normal in your life. I believe your body is smart. It knows what it's doing. That symptom, that body signal that you have is trying to tell you something. And and we don't need to just cover up that body signal. We need to find what's it trying to tell us. What's the root cause of it? The nervous system is the master system of your body. It controls every function. And your spine protects that. We call it the suit of armor. So we, modern life is so unnaturally stressful. We don't live back in hunter gather or like live off a healthy diet and get all this movement. Modern life is so unnaturally stressful that it ends up making us have to suffer with poor health before we ever should, right? Mindy says, your office makes it very affordable to add our kids to my visit and they ask for more adjustments. You all have blessed our family. Thank you, Mindy. That means the world to me. Thank you so much for that comment. So ladies and gentlemen, that's concludes our workshop. I, I hope that it added value. I hope that, um, that you understand where I'm coming from when I talk about the three-legged stool. Making those adjustments in rhythm makes a big difference. Doing those spinal hygiene exercises on a regular basis makes a huge difference. And trying our best to break our bad habits makes a huge difference. And if we can do that, we can bulletproof not just our lower back, we can bulletproof our spine, keeping it as healthy as possible. And the really cool thing about that is that since your spine houses that nervous system, we're also improving the health of our nervous system, which controls everything, helps us heal better, helps us feel better, helps us have more energy, and helps us live that long, healthy life that we all want to live. So if you are in the Northwest Houston area, uh, if you ha don't have a chiropractor or you're looking, give us a call. That's our phone number at the bottom of the screen. You can screen capture it or just write it down, 281-664-2250. Um, I'm happy to do a free consultation, even if you're not in Houston and you just want to do a phone consultation. I'm happy to get on the phone. Some people, they're like, I have this problem. I'm not sure if, if chiropractic can help me, if I should go a different direction. I'm happy to try to talk you through that. I'll, it'll be a quick consultation, but, but I'll try to hear your story, hear what's going on. And I just give you my advice on what I would do and what direction I might take, whether I would go uh, natural or chiropractic or whether maybe you should seek different, um, different options. So that's it. I appreciate it. Thank you all for being here. Jackie says, thanks, Dr. T. This was good. Roger and Jackie. Roger, love you guys. Jackie, love you. I hope you're doing awesome. And uh, thank you for being on here. Appreciate every single one of you. We had mo almost everybody stayed all the way to the end. That makes me extremely happy. If I can ever do anything to help, please don't hesitate to reach out. If you have any questions about the 21-day spinal hygiene challenge, let me know. 
uh, I would love for your feedback on that as well. The reason why it's 21 days, look, I had a lot of people tell me like, don't make it that long. We need to have a, like a three day challenge or a five day challenge. And I'm going, look, you need to be doing these exercises for the rest of your life. So if 21 days is too long, <laughs> we got a problem, right? And if you do a little bit of research, a lot of people will say it takes 21 days to make a habit. And that's what I'm trying to help you do. Put those good habits in place. So if you're doing your spinal hygiene exercises every day for 21 days, you could create a good habit in your life. Okay. Thanks again. I appreciate everybody for being on tonight. Y'all have a wonderful night and we'll see you very soon. Goodbye.